So welcome everybody. Uh, it is a pleasure to have uh, with us uh, today uh, Diego Valencia Enriquez. He's coming from Colombia. He uh, is working on the subject that you will see in the title, in body simulation, orbital structure, evolution of uh, structures in these galaxies, bars, spirals, etc. Uh, he did his uh, PhD in Ina, in Inaoe, in Cholula, close to Mexico City, with Ferrari. And since uh, 2020, he's at the University of uh, Mariana in uh, Maria, Maria, Mariano, in Colombia. And uh, you can see the title. So, uh, Diego, uh, we are very glad to have you here. Please start with your talk. Thank you very much, Professor Panos. Uh, good afternoon, everyone. Thank you for, for having been here uh, today. Uh, the title of the presentation is the Orbital Structure Evolution in Self-Consistent and Body Simulations. Uh, and my collaborators are Ivano Porari and Leonardo uh, Chavez. So can you hear me well? It's OK? Yep. Yes. Yep. OK. Thank you. Then this is the outline of the SAR, the introduction. I talk about of the, my another two words, which are detecting the growth of structures, assessing this, uh, this galaxy instabilities. And also the last word, which about of orbital structure evolution in self-consistent and body uh, simulations. So to start, uh, let me uh, show about of the Edwin classification scans. Here, as you know, we have uh, the elliptical galaxies and in the uh, right part, we have the spiral galaxy, the normal spiral galaxies and the bar galaxy. So our interest is in the growth of structures like, for example, spirals and bar instabilities, likewise some properties that start orbits that form the bar. So the idea is to understand how these structures grow in models, in end body simulations, and how the bar structure also grows and what type of uh, orbits support the, uh, the bar. So let me talk about a little about of my of this work detecting the growth of structures. Let me show, uh, for example, uh, here in in a work of Selwood, uh, he showed that the spiral patterns phase out over some uh, times because the spirals uh, hit kinematically the disks and the spirals uh, disappeared as you see here in this image. On the other hand, we can observe this another work, for example, of the uh, Roca Fabrega, in which we observe here, this, here we have a uh, end body simulation, which for a bar, and the bar have a constant pattern speed. On the other hand, for example, here we have a, uh, in, uh, another, another simulation from Roca Fabrega, which show uh, some spirals and the spirals uh, of the of this in body simulation is is for example uh, along of the the correlation and then in the simulation uh, the spirals uh, fade up after some uh, after some galactic uh, rotation so there are, this is some words, but there are a lot of words in which they explain or show how is the growth of this structure. But in end body simulations, for example, show that the spirals fade out of, over some uh, galactic rotation. So in conclusion, many simulations of stellar disks uh, show that the spiral arms fade out after some uh, galactic, uh, after some galactic rotations. Here, uh, this is another work from Selgut, in which uh, they, uh, they, she, uh, he showed that the bisymmetric spiral were not a single long-lived pattern, but rather the superposition of three or more waves which can grow and decay with, uh, 
with the time. Uh, for example, in this image, uh, Selwood showed the measurement of contours of power function of, uh, of radius and frequencies at different uh, times. Here we can observe, for example, there are two ways in which uh, they are in superposition and he showed that the general morphology of spiral galaxy, for example, is due to the, the superposition of this type of uh, spirals. Uh, then uh, take into account these works, uh, we uh, made some experiments with n-body simulations to analyze the growth of uh, structures or the growth of the spirals. Uh, so we, uh, we made uh, some experiments which have this type of rotation curve. Here we have the, the digs, the bulge and the halo rotation curve. And we made these experiments with different initial uh, conditions. We have different scale height and different dispersion velocity. And then we use the Fourier transform method to analyze the growth of the, the growth of the structure, this with using the Fourier transform. So this is, uh, for example, some results of the work in which uh, we perform the Fourier transform uh, in dividing the, the model in rings in each snapshot. And we applied uh, the Fourier transform uh, along of the azimuthal, azimuthal coordinate. Then uh, in this plot, we show the amplitude of the Fourier transform as function of radius and uh, chain. And for example, each, uh, each uh, of these uh, pixels show the, the, rule, the result of uh, of this ring. Then we can observe in this image that uh, height amplitude show uh, in the part in where the spiral structure is growing. And we observe here, for example, the spiral structure is growing from this radius approach of uh, six kiloparsecs, approach, uh, approaching from the minimum of the curve, for example, and this is spiral uh, growth from here to the inner part and to the external part of the of the disk. And also uh, this spiral, we can observe that phase out some uh, some phase out uh, some galactic rotation, some time. And then another spiral is growing for here and for here in external radius, we can observe that the spiral also is for here and the spiral is for here. And then we can see that some cubes, for example, of the superposition of two arms in different radius of the, of the model. Then to analyze better the growth of this type of uh, spirals, we use the Fourier transform in two dimensions in which we analyze the, the parameter P and the parameter M. The parameter P is related with the pitch angle and the parameter M, which is the mode, is related with the number of arms. And then uh, first, we use a toy logarithmic model in which we put uh, two arms, two type of the spirals with different uh, pattern speed. And then we apply the Fourier transform in two dimensions to this model. And then uh, we observe this type of results for the Fourier transform in two dimensions. And in this animation, uh, this is the inverse of the Fourier transform, which shows a uh, general morphology of this toy of this toy uh, model. Then we can observe here in the in the in this plot, which is the amplitude of the Fourier transform as function of the parameter p and time. And then we can observe here these spots, which means that the two spirals are in superposition, and this gap is when the, the spirals are not in superposition. So we can observe with this toy model 
how is the, co is the behavior of the superposition of spirals. Then uh, taking into account this, uh, we use the Fourier transform in two dimensions to our models. So he, we have the distribution, the distribution of the model, and this is the amplitude of the Fourier transform in two dimensions. Uh, and then this is the, the plot in which, as you see, is similar to the toy, to the toy model. So here is a comparison. We can observe this is the toy model and this is the end body simulation. And we can observe uh, similar uh, results. You can see that this type of, for example, uh, spots maybe can be from the two superposition, the superposition of uh, spirals, similar as you uh, see he here. But another thing or another characteristic that you can see here is the spirals also start with negative parameter P, which means the spirals growth from the leading, uh, leading to the trailing spirals. It is a similar, for example, a, a twin amplification mechanisms. Uh, so uh, with this method, the Fourier transfer in two dimensions, uh, we show these plots of the Fourier transfer in two dimensions, the amplitude as function of sine and pitch angle uh, are showing that the general morphology of our, our model galaxy is due to the superposition of structures with different values of P and angular velocity. velocity. This is the um, conclusion of the work. Then the another, in the another work, uh, which is assessing this galaxy instabilities, uh, uh, in, this, in this work, the idea is to analyze the growth of the bar, as you see in different, in the different images of real galaxies. As you know, uh, there are two, two thirds of the, this galaxy in the local uh, universe. Uh, then there are uh, some words in which explain how is the growth of the bar in this galaxy. For example, uh, this is a word from Atanapsula 2003, uh, in which uh, she explained that the, she explained that the all channels of bar formation are, uh, are, are connected by the shank in angular momentum. In this, in this image, for example, we can observe how the particles of the stars, which are in the, this galaxy, in the end body simulation, lost, uh, lost angular momentum, and the orbits become more elliptical, and these orbits uh, contribute to the bar formation in end body simulation. So there are, there are uh, a lot of these type of words in which uh, show this loss of angular momentum to, to show how the growth is the, the bar in end body simulations. But for example, uh, the spin parameter or the study of the spin in, in the DIX, which also is related with the specific angular momentum, and also we can find a critical limit to assess the instability in situ of a DIGS model and diagnose uh, the growth of the bar. So the idea is to not to use, for example, the angular momentum. Uh, if uh, we use the, we try to use the angular momentum node, if we use the spin parameter, the spin of the DIGS and find a critical limit of the spin parameter. And then we uh, built this kind of models in this work in which we only use two components, the halo rotation, the halo component and the halo, and excuse me, and the DIX uh, component. These are the parameters uh, of, the, of the models in which only we change uh, the spin parameter to, co to construct these these models. And then uh, we, 
we, we this is the a lambda zero three model in which we use the zero point zero three to construct this model, and we use this the spin parameter equal zero point zero four to this model, zero point zero five for this model, and zero point zero six for this model. As you uh, see, uh, the characteristic of this model is that. Uh, the rotation curve of the disk for this model overlaps the rotation curve of the halo in the inner part of the of the disk. Similar for this model, the rotation curve of the disk overlaps the rotation curve of the halo. And for this model, the contribution of the rotation curve are similar. And here is different. The rotation curve of the model, uh, the halo rotation curve overlaps the rotation curve of the disk. So we have these two models from a uh, foreign bar. So these are the snapshots of the of the models in which this this row uh, is for the a lambda zero three model. This on the other row is for the a lambda zero four. This another is for the lambda zero five, and this is for the a lambda zero six uh, model. Uh, these are snapshots uh, for each giga year, zero, one, two, three, four, and five uh, giga years. Uh, <clears throat> excuse me. Okay. No, continue, Diego. There's no, there's no question. Okay, uh, so we can observe here that the the model grows uh, faster uh, a bar here around of the first giga year, and from this model grows a bar uh, in the second giga year, and we. Uh, we compare these two models, a single view that, for example, this model show a stronger a stronger bar uh, compared with this bar. Uh, in this model, we can observe around of the three and four three model, the uh, three giga GR, uh, show an elongate shape. But for example, in the four giga GR, we can observe the bar. In this time, we can observe that the the bar seems to be destroyed, but again, the bar he appear here at the end of the simulation. And in the other hand, in this last model, we can observe that the model does not form any structure, as you see in the, as you see here. So the idea is to analyze uh, the growth of the this structure, the bar structure, using the spin parameter. So we use the work of Mo from 1999, in which the idea is to analyze uh, this parameter, this, the, this parameter here. The spin parameter, compare the spin parameter and the, uh, the critical spin parameter. So we measure the spin parameter and the critical spin parameter in each snapshot, in each time, okay? And to get the critical spin parameter, we, we fit we have to fit the distribution of the halo, find the, the scale of the, of the halo, the radius scale, the concentration, the, this radius scale, and also this function to find this parameter. And then we compare uh, this criteria. So these are the, re the results of these of this end-body uh, simulations. So here in these plots, we have the, this, this continuous line is the critical spin parameter, and this is the, the spin parameter of the disk. We compare these two lines, and we can observe that for the A lambda 03 model, which have a stronger bar, uh, in all the simulation show that the critical spin parameter overlaps the spin parameter, showing this criteria that the spin parameter is less than the critical spin, which shows that the bar uh, always was unstable, unstable, uh, and unstable and form a bar. For example, for this model, 
at the start of the simulation, here are some fluctuations, but when the bar start to fall in this model, uh, the critical spin parameter overlaps the spin parameter and also show the instability of the disks. The, in, this, in this model, for example, we show that uh, here in the, uh, from zero to three, for example, three gigahertz, the spin parameter, the critical spin parameter are fluctuating around of the spin parameter. And when the bar grows, the critical spin parameter overlaps the, the spin parameter showing the instability of the disks. And in this model, we this model showed that this model always was uh, stable, does not form the bar structure. Uh, here we have we have the the critical spin parameter, and this is the spin parameter, showing that the spin parameter is greater than the critical spin, uh, showing that the, uh, this bar does not form any bar structure. So we exam examine uh, how works this criteria with some perturbations. For example, the stable model, when a perturbation pass, form a bar, and then when form a bar, which is this model, when form a bar, the critical spin parameter overlaps the spin parameter, showing the instability of the disk. So this criteria works well for isolated and perturbing, perturbing model, perturbed models. So this is the the conclusion with uh, which uh, show the from this this work, okay. Uh, and then uh, uh, in this part, which I talk about of the last work, which is about of orbital structure evolution in self consistent and body simulation. And then let me show uh, that uh, the real galaxies show this type of structure. For example, uh, as you know, which are the X shape or the or the the peanut uh, shape in real galaxies. The idea is to understand how this shape form uh, in in body simulations and what types or what kind of orbits uh, support this type of uh, structure. Uh, then, uh, for example, some another words show uh, this type of structures, for example, using the Unshar Max machines, show the X shape in different bar, uh, in different bar galaxies to show uh, that uh, in real uh, galaxies, uh, the bar structure maybe show this type of, the, of structure, the X uh, shape. Then uh, to explain how the this structure front, for example, here we have a work from Selgood. Uh, in this work, uh, Selgood use n-body simulations in which uh, they show that when the bar form, uh, the orbits get out uh, from the disk plane and show the and show this this part which is called the the buckling phase. Okay, mm -hmm. uh, when it's different to the bending when the bending is bent all the all the galaxy. Okay. So another. Yes, excuse me. It's okay. Okay. Yeah, go on. Uh, another words, for example, from Martinez Valcuesta, uh, she showed how is the growth of this type of the structure, uh, how is the buckling phase. Then she showed that first there are an internal buckling phase in the internal part of the N body model. And then after some time, some galactic rotations appear another buckling phase, which is, which is in the outer part of the bar uh, of the bar region, as you see here, or as you see here in the amplitude of the Fourier uh, transform, the first buckling phase, and here is the second uh, buckling phase. 
also the idea is to know uh, what type of orbits support the, this type of structure. For example, uh, a work of the professor Patsus and Atanaxula. Uh, they show that there are uh, a lot of uh, bifurcations of families of orbits from the X1 uh, family, uh, as you know. Uh, I won't uh, delete deeply into this topic because you know you are here the expert in this part of families of of orbits. But the general uh, conclusion is that uh, the general morphology of a bar is is due to different families of type of orbits. This type of X one orbits. Uh, okay, and then. In this another in this another work uh, from Locas, they use also in body simulation to analyze the growth of the structure before, during, and after the the buckling phase, and uh, they use uh, they use the frequencies the frequency analysis. Then they get this type of histograms. In these histograms, uh, they plot the uh, Y frequency over the X frequency. And in these histograms, they plot the zeta frequency, the height frequency over the X uh, frequency uh, before, before the booking phase and after the booking phase. Uh, they show that here, uh, the set or the assemble of orbits appear here from two to three point five in this quotient, and then after the booking phase, this this set of uh, orbits move to the left to this range of frequency, which is from one point five to to two. Okay. And then the idea is now, uh, for example, uh, another work from Portal. They classify the orbits in, in this type in, with these letters uh, using the frequency analysis in the height frequency, the zeta frequency over the x uh, frequency. Then uh, they show uh, they show that there are different uh, different families. And they show how these different type of families using this range, A, B, C, D, F, A, B, C, D, and F, uh, contribute to the bar morphology of an, a model. So for example, uh, the family A contribute in this form. And for example, the F family, which is around of the ratio uh, two, the ratio F zeta over the Fx, Fx equals two, contribute to this form, the smile, uh, this type of smile orbit, which uh, maybe contribute to the pinup or the X uh, shape of the orbit. They use uh, only the orbits that are along of the bar and to shoot this type of orbits, uh, they use the, they only shoot the orbit which have the uh, this quotient, this ratio, the radial frequency over the X frequency approach of two. Uh, then the idea uh, with our simulation is to know how is the growth of the of the of the bar morphology, but using the the frequency the frequency analysis. Uh, so uh, we use the same models in the last uh, work, uh, which are these models, which isolate models. And, but uh, we, uh, we recalculate, we recalculate the simulations. Now uh, we use, a, we present before with uh, here for a more precise frequency determination, we recalculate the simulations. Uh, uh, then uh, instead of having 612 snapshots, uh, now we have uh, 6,120 snapshots to get better calculations in the frequency in the frequency analysis. 
Uh, so uh, these are the same snapshots, but uh, now this is the A lambda zero three, A lambda zero zero four, and this is the A lambda zero six uh, model. This line represents 10 kiloparsecs. And now we show this snapshot in different views, the face on, H on, and N on the views. A single view, we can observe that in the second giga year, we can observe here uh, the buckling phase for this model. We can observe, for example, here the buckling phase in this model. And in this model, uh, we can observe an incipient uh, buckling phase is not, for example, for uh, not complete the buckling phase. This is the slowdown of the bar pattern speed. Uh, this line is for a lambda zero three model. This another line is for a lambda zero uh, four model, and this line is for the a lambda zero five model. Each vertical line represents the interval in which we calculate the frequency analysis. So for each giga year, we calculate the the frequency analysis of all the orbits in the in the models. Uh, so then, uh, how we calculate the frequency analysis? Uh, we uh, first uh, put the the snapshots in the ver in the horizontal position using the the slowdown of the bar, the path, the angular position of the bar, and then using the angular position of the bar, we set all the snapshots. Uh, in this vertical position to get the orbits which are in the end body model. For example, this is an, uh, an orbit. And then uh, after once we obtain the snapshots in the horizontal position, we proceed to calculate the frequency analysis with the orbits. So to get the frequency, the frequencies, uh, we, uh, the, the steps were first subtract the average value of the signal to remove the zero frequency of our artifacts. So we put the signal around of the, the zero. Then we filter the signal using the Hanning window, window to reduce the slide loss when we calculate the, the Fourier transform. Then we get this uh, the the signal uh, with this red line, and then we in this red line we apply the fast Fourier transform to filter the signal and find the the amplitudes. So uh, we we choose the maximal amplitude to find the mean frequency but we save the neighboring frequencies and amplitude points. So we find this point, which is the maximum, but we also save these two points. And then we fit with a parabolic curve to determine the vertex positions to find in the, in the vertex the mean frequency. So our code uh, was validated, for example, with a work from Carpintero in the 90s using an, an logarithmic potential with, for example, this orbit, and we find the same uh, frequencies. Also, we validate our code using a signal or cosine signal to get the, the frequency. Then this... Uh, these calculations, uh, these calculations were used for all the orbits in the Dix model. And for example, these are uh, the results. So we calculate the, all the frequencies, the radial frequency, the azimuthal frequency, the theta frequency, the X frequency, and the Y, and the Y frequency. And these maps uh, show how, for example, the orbits populate uh, uh, as uh, in when the model is evolving, how populate the, the mean resonance. For example, here in this, uh, in this column, we show the A lambda 03 model. Here, the evolution of the A lambda 04 model. And this is the A lambda 05, uh, 05 model. Here we can observe the mean frequency, mean resonance, two, one resonance, five, two, and three, 
and three one uh, resonance. Uh, each uh, plot is for this interval of time zero zero one, and this plot one two two three three four four five and five six interval. And this model was evolved from more one giga gr, okay, to analyze better the growth of of the bar to six seven uh, giga gr's. And then here we can observe how the orbits, which are along of the bar, are populate uh, uh, the this mean resonance, the two one resonance. Uh, so we can observe, for example, uh, star here, the set of orbits star here, and then in the second interval of time, this uh, set of orbits move to greater ratios, more greater uh, greater ratios around of 0 0.7 to 1 and and move uh, and grow for this this line okay similar behavior for this model in which uh, the orbits start here in start to populate in these ratios around of 0 0.5 and then for example uh, after the booking phase, the set of um, orbits uh, grows for this line and move to greater ratios also. And in this model, uh, similar behavior, uh, the orbits start uh, appear for here and then move to the greater ratios for, for here. Uh, also, uh, we develop this graph, which is uh, uh, in this image, which is a normalized cumulative number of orbits as function of time to the number of periods of the particles for the orbits within the frequency range we choose. We only work with this type of orbits, uh, which are along of the bars to analyze the, the behavior. So uh, in this interval, uh, we plot uh, this, the we plot this curve, uh, uh, and then we find that uh, uh, most of the orbits have a, a more for rotation, and it is enough to get the frequencies of the of the orbits. Okay, to prove that is enough to to get uh, uh, with four or more rotation is enough to get the frequencies. And then here in these Instagrams, also we show how is the behavior of the growth of the bar. This is the end body models. This is the A lambda zero three and the color light, the different time intervals. And this is the A lambda zero four and this is the A lambda zero five model. Also, we developed uh, some frozen potentials, uh, as you see here, and we observe uh, that there are similar behavior. So let me speak a little bit about of the of the frozen uh, potential. So to build the frozen potential, uh, we use this Hamiltonian in which uh, these are the coordinates x, y, and zeta. This is the potential, and this is the bar uh, pattern speed. Uh, so the bar pattern, excuse me, the bar pattern speed uh, we use is in in this excuse me in this interval of time, in the middle of interval of time. We choose the snapshot in the middle in the middle part for to froze the the potential. For this interval, the middle snapshot, for this interval, the middle snapshot, and so, so on. So as you see here, then uh, we calculate the same frequencies and also we get similar, uh, similar behavior to the end body model. And another thing here, we observe two, uh, two kinds of frozen potential for this in which this frozen potential was calculated for one giga GR, and this frozen potential was integrated 
for say six giga year to get, for example, more uh, more rotations in in the orbits, and then we can observe that our similar be behaviors showing that the end body simulations and uh, body the calculations uh, of the end body simulations are are well, okay, uh, and then uh, another thing that we uh, that we made is calculated this max fraction with this interval of frequencies. So how many orbits uh, there are in this interval of frequency and how many orbits there are in this interval of frequencies and in this. So far, uh, these are this is these are the plot for this interval. This is the plot for this interval, and this is the plot for the uh, this interval. And this line shows the a lambda zero three, uh, the next line the a lambda zero four, and this line the a lambda zero five, similar to the to these uh, uh, models. Uh, we can observe, for example, uh, when uh, the booking phase appear in the in the model, it is related with this maximal, the first peak here, is related with the booking phase of the of the end body model, and then, for example, uh, the in the simulation the orbits fall a little bit, but then. Uh, start to up uh, again. Similar behavior is for the a lambda zero four model, and in this model uh, there are a big fall, and then start again to grow the, the this type of of orbits. Uh, so we use, as I said before to analyze the contribution of the morphology of the bar, only we use this type of orbit, which are around in the elongated part of the, of the bar, okay? Uh, and then we classified uh, in different, uh, uh, similar to the portile work in this type of uh, uh, families. Uh, so in these histograms, uh, we observe that this, for this column, this is the a lambda zero three model. This is for a lambda zero four, zero four, and zero five model. Uh, this is the number of orbits, uh, the per percentage of particles, and here uh, and here we we observe this quotient, the theta frequency over the x uh, frequency. Okay. We can observe uh, the when the bar appear before the booking phase, the set of orbits are in this interval around of 2.5, from 2.5 to 3. And when the, uh, the booking phase appear, uh, this assemble of orbits move to the left to less ratios from 1.5 around of 2 to 0.3. And this is uh, this type of orbits uh, follows growing with more percentage. Similar behavior, for example, for this a lambda zero four uh, model, uh, in later at later times, uh, the set of uh, orbits appear for appear here in this interval of quotient in this ratio. And then, for example, when the booking phase appears, the set of orbits move to the left to less ratios also. And in the lambda zero five model, also at later times appear this assemble of orbits. Here, the bar is grow growing, and uh, we can uh, show that uh, uh, the booking phase also is incipient because uh, it is not complete. Uh, move to the this unless quotient the set of orbits. Uh, here uh, I show some time of orbits uh, with uh, different quotients from the body models. Uh, this an orbit in different time intervals 
here is for one one from one to two giga years to three three four four five and five six this line here represents five kiloparsecs kiloparsecs and these numbers these numbers here represent this quotient the radial frequency over the x frequency and the next numbers these numbers for all the orbits represent the zeta frequency over the x uh, frequency for example, for, for this orbit, uh, we can observe that when the orbit becomes more uh, elliptical or around of the bar, these quotients uh, less uh, or, or fall in the value of two. In the value of two, it's the value in which we choose the, the orbits to analyze the, the growth of the bar the this this type of orbits in this around of this ratio uh, and then as you see for all the orbits which are uh, elongated uh, uh, this ratio is around of two and then this is another ratio show it's related with this this caution the frequent the zeta frequency over the x uh, frequency excuse me here yeah, uh, and then for example, uh, in this orbit, uh, for example, here uh, we can observe uh, for this orbit, for the orbit C, uh, in the orbit C, these orbits are from the A lambda zero three model in this orbit, in the first uh, uh, stage of the bar, which is before the buckling phase, uh, the orbit is in the plane of the disk. But when the orbit starts to get out of the disk plane, for example, show this type of orbit, which is a, a banana shape in the H on view. And here we can observe a little a box, a box shape. Another orbit, for example, this type of orbit, also show a smile shape in the H on view, but here we can observe a pretzel shape but for example, in this another interval of time, this orbit becomes in fish shape, the pretzel to from pretzel to fish shape. So we can observe that the, the orbits are changing the morphology uh, at different times as the potential of the end body model is, is evolving. And this is a small orbit. This line represents one kiloparsec. This orbit show a lot of uh, rotation. So for example, here is more difficult to view some morphology in, in this part, for example. And we observe here the a box uh, uh, shape. Uh, okay, and then uh, we, uh, we do a maps to show uh, a maps to show how uh, this family or orbits contribute to the morphology of the of the bar. So we develop this type, which I call it orbits assemble density profile. Okay, uh, and then uh, uh, how develop this type of this type of maths? Where so we use uh, we divide an orbit in this mesh. And in each cell, we count how many times the orbit passes for this, this cell. And then to all the orbits which are in this range of uh, frequency, we zoom the contribution of the, all the orbits. And then with this matrix, uh, we construct uh, the, we construct this type of, of plots. So this plot, is for all the orbits which have this interval of time in this black uh, in this black range around of for example around of two and three. Uh, here we show the phase on the end on the H on and the end on view. So this is for the first uh, the first uh, the first interval. And then, for example, when the uh, assembly of orbits move to the left to less uh, ratios, all these orbits contribute to this type of morphology. 
And we can observe, for example, here are the orbits uh, in the disk plane and in the disk plane. And then the orbits get out of the disk plane showing this type of morphology similar to a pinnut or X shape. And then the histogram falling growing and this type of morphology uh, becomes more or uh, becomes stronger. This is for the model A lambda zero zero three, and this column is for the model A lambda zero four, which are these histograms, this assemble of orbits, uh, develop this type of uh, maps. And then, for example, when this is the orbits move to the left to leather ratios, here we can observe how the buckling phase appear. And for example, for the A lambda zero five model, uh, we observe that the booking phase is uh, incipient yet, as you see here. Uh, the assemble of orbits move slowly to less uh, to less uh, to lesser rate ratios. Okay, and then uh, we we also calculate how is the contribution of each of each being of the histogram. So this being, for example, this is for the A lambda 03 model. Uh, we can observe how this being contribute to the, to the orbit. For example, in this interval of time, one, two uh, interval, uh, this being contribute to this plot. Here we can observe the different, uh, the different views. And for example, uh, when the assemble of orbits, for example, move to the left, uh, is the is related with this column. So uh, I explain uh, this beam belongs to this plot. The next beam belongs to this plot. The next beam to the next plot, and so on. Similar for this for this plot, for example. Uh, this beam belongs uh, to this to this plot, and for example, the coefficients close to the ratio uh, two, we can observe that this family of orbits, which have this interval of coefficients, uh, belong, for example, the x or the pinnut shape for all the for all the uh, all the orbits. So we can observe that to uh, less uh, ratios, the orbits are small, and to greater ratios, around of two, the orbits are more uh, greater. And these are the orbits that contribute to the X shape. And these orbits are that they contribute uh, more with the, the bar potential. Uh, so it is uh, the work we we made to show how the orbits contribute to the the morphology of the bar, uh, and then this is the the mean result of this this work. So it is all of my presentation. Excellent. Diego, can you hear us? Yes. Yeah. 